What if Obi-Wan Kenobi stayed with Anakin Skywalker instead of going to Utapau in Revenge of the Sith? I really like this one, I know I've said that for a lot recently, but I'm really enjoying the writing recently. So, hope you guys enjoy. Let's get right into it. Our story begins inside of a Republic transport as Obi-Wan and Mace Windu are riding with Yoda to the Republic hangar. Yoda is headed to Kashyyyk, and just before this, Obi-Wan gave Anakin Skywalker a new mission. Spy on Chancellor Palpatine. Anakin took it just as bad, if not worse, than Kenobi expected, and now he sat here with the two most influential members of the Council, telling them that Anakin did not take this assignment with enthusiasm. Windu said it's very dangerous putting the two of them together, expressing that he doesn't think the boy can handle it, and that he does not trust Anakin. And now, Obi-Wan brought up the prophecy, saying that Anakin is the Chosen One. The prophecy was not talked about very often, but it was a cloud that hung above the Jedi all the time. Was Anakin really this chosen one? And Yoda said that perhaps the prophecy has been misread. And Obi-Wan sat in a sort of disbelief now, Windu and Yoda both admitting they don't truly trust Anakin, yet they just gave him an extremely important mission that might even defy the Jedi code in some ways. Obi-Wan had to relax himself, and he said that if the Jedi do not trust him, then he must be monitored. And so Obi-Wan requested that he remain on Coruscant, watch over Anakin, until the war is settled. Yoda and Mace exchanged a look, and words seemed to be said without even speaking, as Yoda looked down, tapping his cane, and he told Obi-Wan that they would allow this. Yoda only hesitated, because he could feel Obi-Wan forming a true attachment to Anakin, far beyond what the Jedi allowed, but perhaps this is what young Skywalker needs. And so Yoda was dropped off at the hangar, saying goodbye to the two Jedi, and from here, Mace and Obi-Wan would part ways. Mace back to the temple for an update on the Outer Rim sieges, and Kenobi on his own path. Inside Padme Amidala's apartment, Anakin and Padme talked about the recent news from Anakin. He told Padme that he was put on the council by Palpatine, but then asked by Obi-Wan to spy on Palpatine. In a way, he was working as a double agent, and it was beginning to tear Anakin apart, as on top of all of it, he was having nightmares of his wife dying in childbirth, something he would never let happen. And Anakin was soon in disbelief, as Padme began asking him to speak to Palpatine about ending this war. She was urging Anakin to find a diplomatic solution, saying that the Republic they were fighting for may no longer exist. Anakin got up angrily, saying he could not do that. And so Padme got up, hugging Anakin, urging him to remember Naboo when things were happier. But Anakin could barely remember what that was like. Right now, everything felt wrong, and he said he has to go meet with the Chancellor. But as Anakin turned, he made eye contact with someone that just parked his speeder outside of the apartment. Someone that carried a sad smile and even sadder eyes, staring at Anakin and Padme. Anakin was caught, and he could only say, Obi-Wan. The Jedi Master got out of the speeder, saying that he was looking for Anakin, and just had a hunch that he might find him here. Anakin was flustered, worried about what would happen to him and Padme now that they were seen together like this. But Obi-Wan simply asked Anakin, to cancel his meeting with the Chancellor, so the two of them can talk, as friends. Anakin said that he thought his assignment was to spy on Palpatine, but Obi-Wan replied, saying that it can wait, admitting that he's worried about Anakin. And Anakin felt like he should be relieved, happy to see Obi-Wan, willing to reach out for help. But the voice deep inside of him, the dark dragon trying to break out, told Anakin that Obi-Wan was only here because he does not trust him. Anakin didn't need this, and so, he turned to leave. But as he did, Padme yelled out, Anakin needs help, he's having nightmares about our child, about me dying in childbirth, and years of secrecy were disrupted, completely broken in this moment. No one spoke, you could cut through the tension in the air with a lightsaber, but Obi-Wan tried a joke instead, saying, you two are together, I never would have guessed it, with a small smile, and he once again invited Anakin to sit down. Anakin sighed. The truth was out there, may as well tell Obi-Wan about it now. And so he cancelled his opera meeting with Palpatine, sitting down beside Obi-Wan and Padme let them be, heading off to a meeting with some of the members of the Senate. They sat together now on the couch, overlooking Coruscant, and the Jedi Temple could be seen in the distance. And Obi-Wan began talking about something that the two Jedi friends rarely talked about, Satine Kryze, the woman Obi-Wan loved. The woman Obi-Wan would have left the Jedi Order for had she only said the word. And in the middle of the Clone Wars, Obi-Wan had watched helplessly as Darth Maul killed her right in front of Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan described to Anakin what he felt in that moment. 
and it was something he'd never told anyone. As Satine died in his arms, he felt something course through his veins. Not blood, something simultaneously colder and yet hotter than blood. It was anger like never before. He fought to hold it back, listening to Satine's final words as she fell dead, saying she always loved Obi-Wan. And in that moment, he felt sorrow, but he also felt something different. This was an act of the dark side, and Obi-Wan had burned with rage. With the rage, in that moment, came a vision to Obi-Wan. His eyes burning with hatred, screams in the red glare of a lightsaber. He would cleave Maul in two. He would do much worse. There would be nothing left of him, Savage, or the Mandalorian commandos. He would kill anyone who had a hand in Satine's death kill anyone who stood in his way. But Obi-Wan said that that vision, that dark side moment, ended as Maul laughed at him, saying this was the real Obi-Wan Kenobi. And in that moment, Obi-Wan realized that if he acted in any way on this anger, he would lose himself and everything he'd ever cared for. He realized that none of that is what Satine wanted. She loved Obi-Wan because of his good heart. And Obi-Wan looked up at Anakin, saying that is the same reason that Padme loves him. Anakin was in disbelief. He'd never heard any of this before. Obi-Wan had never told anyone of this before. But he knew Anakin was feeling the same way that he felt in that moment. That he would do anything to save Padme. Anything to keep her safe. And he would destroy anyone that got in his way of doing that. And Anakin broke down, saying he feels lost. Like he doesn't know himself. He won't lose her. But Obi-Wan said these visions, these nightmares that Anakin is getting, are coming from the same place that Obi-Wan's dark vision came from. His anger, his fears, his pain, that inner darkness that he always felt. And Anakin said he wants to be free of this pain. And Obi-Wan asked Anakin to let him help. Together, they can figure this out. And Obi-Wan put his hand on Anakin's shoulder as they looked out across Coruscant. Deep in the Coruscant city, Chancellor Palpatine watched in the opera theater as the show was going on, but he was not truly watching. His mind was elsewhere. Anakin had canceled on him for some reason. Anakin never canceled on him. Anakin loved talking to him, loved venting to him, loved allowing his dark side to show around him. Palpatine feared that something had gone wrong, and so he decided that tonight he would continue to put the nightmares in Anakin's mind, but they would be increased dramatically and Anakin would have to come to him in time. So Anakin and Obi-Wan would go to the Jedi Temple together, and Obi-Wan would bring him to the Great Tree. The two of them would meditate together in silence. This tree was something Anakin was obsessed with as a child, as he never saw a true tree on Tatooine or Coruscant, so this was something that always amazed him. And today, sitting in front of the tree, Obi-Wan encouraged Anakin to find that peace, that calmness from before the war, find it. Find himself, find who Anakin always wanted to be. The two of them sat here for a while. It was calm, peaceful, relaxing, something Anakin just had not had in a long time. But eventually, the two of them were asked to go to the council, as the location of General Grievous has been found. Initially, Palpatine planned to tell Anakin the location, but Anakin was away from him, so he gave this information to Republic spies. The Chancellor hoped that once Anakin was denied for the mission, he would get angry and come back to Palpatine. Inside of the council chambers, the council discussed the finding of General Grievous on Utapau. There was some debate about who should lead this mission, and eventually Kiari Mundi looked to Obi-Wan, saying that he should be the one to do it. Yoda and Mace exchanged a glance, and said perhaps that it should be Kit Fisto instead. Mace continued on, saying Fisto nearly defeated him once, and Obi-Wan just returned from the Outer Rim sieges. His men were depleted, tired, so Fisto should go instead. The council looked around, and eventually they all agreed that Fisto will lead this mission. So the council departed, and Anakin walked with Obi-Wan through the temple. Obi-Wan convinced Anakin to spend the night in the temple, and if the nightmares still come to him, search through them, find them, find them with the peace from the temple. The rest of the day was fairly normal, and Anakin did finally visit Palpatine, who said that Anakin deserved to be the one fighting Grievous and ending the war. But Anakin did not seem too sure. Palpatine was discouraged by this, but before he could finally tell Anakin the story of Plagueis the Wise, Anakin said it was getting late. He had to go. So that night, Anakin would sleep in one of the most peaceful meditation rooms in the temple. It was the one closest to Obi-Wan's quarters, and late in the night, 
the nightmares still crept into Anakin's mind. As a cross Coruscant, in the Sith Lair, Darth Sidious was using advanced Sith alchemy to plant even more terrible nightmares in Anakin's mind. He would destroy him until the only answer was to turn to the darkness. As Anakin slept, he saw Padme giving birth as he always did, and she was dying. But things were different in this nightmare. Obi-Wan stood next to her, and after she gave birth, Obi-Wan stabbed and killed Padme, saying the children would be trained as Jedi, and the nightmare shifted to the Senate building on fire in the distance. Anakin looked around to see Mace Windu standing over a dead Palpatine, anger in his eyes as Jedi marched up the stairs of the Senate building, taking over the Republic, just as Palpatine said was going to happen. But Anakin did not wake up. Instead, he used Obi-Wan's advice, and he dove into these nightmares with the Force. He tried to grab Windu, but the Jedi faded away as laughter filled the air, combined with lightning. Anakin closed his eyes, felt the lights out of the Force, and looked across to the Jedi Temple. Now it was on fire, not the Senate building, and clones were marching up into the Jedi Temple. Anakin was seeing the real truth for the first time. Behind him, he heard a gravelly, evil voice, and he turned to see a hooded man. Anakin lunged at him, and he instantly woke up before he could see who was under the hood. Inside of the Sith Lair, Palpatine was thrown backwards, slamming against the wall. He scowled angrily. Somehow Anakin resisted him, ended the nightmare, got to him. Someone was influencing him in a positive way. As Anakin awoke, he saw Obi-Wan standing over him. Apparently, Obi-Wan had been trying to wake him up for a while, but Anakin was not responding. And when he woke up, Obi-Wan was relieved, and Anakin said he was able to search through his nightmares. Someone, or something, had infected his mind, but he seems to have gotten rid of it for now. The next morning, Anakin and Obi-Wan stood inside of the Jedi Temple Command Center as they stood around a battle data table with Mace Windu and a few other Jedi. Eventually, the hologram of Kit Fisto's clone commander Monk appeared to say that Fisto has engaged Grievous. Windu turned to Anakin, telling him to alert the Chancellor of this, gauge his reaction. Anakin nodded, turning to leave, and as he left, Obi-Wan watched him go. Something felt off in the Force. It was as if someone was urging him to not let Anakin be alone right now. Obi-Wan tried to brush it off, but the Force was strong with him, and Obi-Wan stood around the data table for a while longer, long enough for Anakin to get to Palpatine. But eventually, Obi-Wan told Windu that he was following Anakin, saying, I have a bad feeling about this. And inside of Palpatine's office, Anakin and the Chancellor talked for a while, and Palpatine eventually reached a decision on his next move. Yoda was off-world, along with many other members of the Jedi Council. The time to execute Order 66 had to be right now. Anakin would either join him, or he would die. And so Palpatine slowly revealed the truth, asking Anakin to join him, saying that only he could save Padme from certain death. And in this moment, everything clicked for Anakin. The nightmares came from the Sith, from Palpatine, and he ignited his lightsaber. Obi-Wan ran through the executive building. He could feel Anakin in the Force. Something was wrong, and as he reached the door to the Chancellor's office, Obi-Wan heard Anakin's lightsaber ignite. Without hesitation, Obi-Wan opened the door, igniting his own lightsaber, only to find Anakin staring at Palpatine. Anakin turned, confused but happy to see Obi-Wan, and Anakin said that he is the Sith Lord. Palpatine knew in this moment that it was over. Anakin would not be joining him, so he turned around with a smile, saying it took them long enough, even mocking Obi-Wan by saying, Sith Lords are the Jedi's speciality, and Palpatine turned with an unbelievable speed, slamming both Jedi into the wall with the Force, reaching into the air, calling his red lightsaber to him, igniting it as the Jedi got back up. The air suddenly crackled with tension as Anakin and Obi-Wan confronted the Dark Lord of the Sith. It was always meant to be this way. Skywalker and Kenobi, heroes of the Clone Wars, together as one until the very end. At the same time, they said, together, and the office suddenly became a battleground as the clash of lightsabers filled the air. Anakin, consumed by conflicting emotions, attacked with a ferocity that matched the intensity of his inner turmoil, while Obi-Wan, steady and focused, sought to bring some balance to this battle. Darth Sidious, the master of the dark side, moved with speed and agility that defied his seemingly innocent and older appearance. His crimson lightsaber met the blue blades of the Jedi as they clashed against each other. As the battle raged on, 
Anakin's rage fueled his strikes, each swing of his lightsaber charged with raw power. He felt so betrayed by Palpatine. Obi-Wan, on the other hand, fought with strategic precision, attempting to exploit weaknesses in the Sith Lord's defenses. Sidious, however, proved to be even more powerful than Dooku, effortlessly parrying their attacks, fighting them back. The two Jedi moved in again, but Sidious was ready. He spun under their blades, then kicked Anakin in the back, sending him crumpling to the floor. He hit Anakin with lightning for good measure, knocking him down for a moment, then engaged Kenobi. The two of them moved across the room, and soon locked lightsabers. Sidious was impressed by Obi-Wan, but as they stood here with their lightsabers against each other, Sidious reached out with the Force for his second saber, hidden inside of a statue. The saber flew through the air before Obi-Wan realized what was happening. Sidious grabbed it and ignited it directly into Kenobi's stomach. Anakin was getting up, and he screamed out in horror, falling to his knees as Obi-Wan fell to the floor. Palpatine turned away now, looking out of the window, as Anakin ran up to his fallen master. Palpatine spoke with an evil hiss, asking Anakin why he made him do this. He said that Anakin was not powerful enough to save Obi-Wan, and he won't be powerful enough to save Padme unless he joins the dark side. Palpatine told Anakin to just give in to the rage, fulfill his destiny. And Anakin looked into Obi-Wan's dying eyes. He felt something coursing through his veins. Not blood, something colder and yet hotter than blood. It was anger like never before. He would cleave Palpatine in two. He would do much worse. There would be nothing left of him. But Obi-Wan reached up, touching Anakin's cheek. And as his dying wish, he asked Anakin to remember his final lesson. And Anakin remembered everything that Obi-Wan said about Satine, how he handled it. The darkness he felt, and how half the battle against the Sith was denying them of the dark side influence. Anakin put down Obi-Wan, standing tall. He would kill the Sith here and now, but not in darkness, in light. It was his destiny to destroy the Sith. He would fulfill his destiny. He felt true power run through his veins now, the power of the Chosen One. Sidious had a fearful look on his face as Anakin moved forward, and Anakin swung at both lightsabers with perfect speed and precision, feeling Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon watching over him in the Force, and Sidious never stood a chance. Anakin swung across and down, cutting away one lightsaber, then moving his saber up through the air to cut through Sidious's eye as the Sith Lord fell to the ground. Sidious spun away, blasting lightning at Anakin, and the lightning did hit him, but he quickly recovered, catching it, blasting it at full power back to the Sith Lord. The lightning turned from his blue color to a lighter color, nearly yellow, as Sidious fought against it, but it was no use. His lightsaber fell away, the lightning burned into his disfigured face. The Sith Lord used the Force to break the window, and he jumped out of it in desperation. But Anakin used all of his power to hold him in place in the air, and Anakin closed his fist. Sidious felt his bones break, his body crumbled, and he died in the air. Anakin used his darkness against him, pulling his body back into the room as Windu, Sazitin, and Aegon Kolar entered to see what was going on. Anakin explained everything, and the Jedi said that he did the right thing. Sidious was too far too dangerous to be left alive. He had control of the Senate and of the courts. Anakin looked to Obi-Wan's body, but it was gone, replaced only by his robes, and somehow Anakin could feel Obi-Wan in the Force around him. From here, Grievous was destroyed, and the Separatist leaders were arrested. With the war ending, the Senate found out Palpatine was the Sith Lord working for the Separatists, and Bail Organa would become Interim Chancellor. Padme would of course give a safe birth with Anakin by her side. Peace would soon return to the galaxy. When it was all over, Anakin stood by the lake on Naboo, overlooking it all, and in the distance, in the middle of the lake, he thought he could see the blue spirits of Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon. With a smile, Anakin turned back to see Padme, Ahsoka, and his children, waiting for him. And folks, that is where our story ends today. Let's talk about a few things. First off, Obi-Wan Kenobi. I know a lot of you get angry when I kill him in these stories, I know, but I, there's gotta be some sacrifice, some, you know, actual, I don't even know how to put it, but I like, I like doing it, as sad as it is. I felt it carried a lot of weight, and in that moment he could kind of, it could be a callback to what he told Anakin about Satine just a day earlier or so. I really liked that, um, I thought of it while writing, so hope you guys enjoyed that part. I know killing Obi-Wan is always sad, but just having him there as a force ghost 
hopefully lessened the pain a bit for ya. Otherwise, I really, really, really love diving into Anakin and Obi-Wan's relationship, because Obi-Wan, like, yes, he was stubborn in Revenge of the Sith and through the Clone Wars, but reading the books, reading the novels, and just basically, you know, lore and such, it's always revealed that Obi-Wan deeply, deeply did love Anakin, like, he, and, you know, seeing the Kenobi show, and just lore post-Revenge of the Sith, he has great regrets about not helping Anakin more, so I always love to take the path of what if he did just let his guard down, let his Jedi way down, and just try to be a friend. And I always enjoy these stories, as it just shows their brotherly love, kind of. So, hope you guys enjoyed that. From there, um, yeah, I guess a pretty traditional story for the most part, but one I really, really did enjoy. So let me know what you thought. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.